so many times, a lot of Christians truly have a desire to pray. They have a desire to do prayer and fasting. They have a desire to stay up long hours praying, you know, but they find it very hard to pray. And I have done a video on what the Bible says about praying long prayers because, you know, many people are mistaken. And then they say that when you spend a lot of time in prayer, then you are being disobedient to Jesus because Jesus said that, you know, he hates uh, vain repetitions and all that. And I have done a video on that. And I think I'm going to put the link in the description box. But just in brief, the Bible does not forbid spending a lot of time in prayer. The Lord himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, he spent a lot of time in prayer. The Bible says he would spend even the whole night in prayer. Jesus would spend the whole night in prayer. He would wake up early just for him to have enough time to pray before he starts attending to people. But what he hates is when you go out in public just for a pretense, just because you want people to think, oh, you're so prayerful. Then you go and start praying long prayers that mean nothing. You know, just, you just keep on repeating words you don't even mean just to, make, just to make it seem like you've prayed for a long time. That is what the Bible is talking about where the Lord says, he already knows what you need. You don't need to do all these vain repetitions, which are just for a show. But the Lord has nothing against his children coming to spend long hours in prayer because they want to, because they desire his presence. You know, because when you start to spend time in the presence of the Lord, the Lord is going to start increasing your desire for him. You know, like the more you draw closer to him, the more he makes you want to draw closer because he wants you to be as close as possible. And so you're going to find that the more time that you spend in prayer, the more time that you're going to want to spend in prayer. And people who don't spend a lot of time in prayer, they struggle to be free from sin. But people who spend a lot of time in prayer, not just for vain repetition, but from, the, from their heart, you know, to really connect to the Lord God, I'm telling you, Jesus sets you free from your bondage of sin. Because whatever sins that you realize that, that, that still have a stronghold in your life, when you come to pray, you tell the Lord about it. And because you spend more time in prayer, you know, the Bible says that where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. So, Whatever you're investing your time in, that is where your heart will be also. A person, who is, a person who is spending hours and hours and hours on social media, and then they come to the presence of the Lord, and then they say, Jesus hates vain repetitions, so I'm just going to pray for two minutes. After all, Jesus already knows everything I need. And then they just come and say, Lord Jesus, this and that, this. Amen. I'm telling you, that person, no matter what, they're going to be bound to be slaves of sin. Their desires, when, when they lie down to sleep, the things that are going to be running through their minds are just all those things they were seeing on social media. Because where your treasure is, where you are laying up your treasure, where you are investing, that is where your heart to be. But when you have been spending time in the presence of the Lord, I'm telling you this, you're going to find that because you have been spending so much time in the presence of the Lord, like even when you lie down to sleep, you find that your spirit man is just drifting in speaking in tongues. Like whenever you just doze off, like you find that you are, you, you are just like as you doze off because that is where your treasure is and that is where your heart is. And this is real. You're going to find that when you just start to doze off, you're just speaking in tongues your spirit man is continuing to pray. That happens. But when you have been spending all your time on the things of the earth, you're going to find that when you lie down to sleep, the only things that are running through your mind are all those things of the earth. And your whole life is going to be patterned towards those things of the earth. So don't let Satan deceive you that it's not important to spend a lot of time in prayer. The flesh is only crucified 
when you spend time in prayer. So there was a day when I was praying during the day. And when I started to pray, the Holy Spirit, he asked me to, that was in the morning, but the Holy Spirit told me that I needed to stay up the whole night that night to pray because I have done a video on this. The Lord Jesus, at the beginning of, of my journey with him, these are some of the things that the Lord had taught me that these are really, really important in, in growing my desire for, for the Lord. Because our desire for the Lord, it doesn't just happen, you know. Some, almost every Christian, like if you ask them if they love the Lord, they're going to say yes. But not every, not every Christian, as in who's a member of the religion of Christianity. Not every one of them loves the Lord because we cannot love the Lord. We have no ability to love the Lord. He is the one who can help us to love him. And the more time that we spend in his presence, the Lord increases our love for him. We start to love him more. And because we start to love him more, we, we, we start to get drawn to his presence even much more. And so Spending a lot of time in prayer is very, very important. When you come, just ask the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, I do not know how to pray. Lord, help me to pray and help me to just lose myself in your presence and to just forget everything. I have given this time to you, but I need you to help me. And what I want to say is when you pray, Satan tries to, to stop you from praying. When you fast, Satan wants you to break your fast. When I was spending time in the presence of the Lord, when I was praying, then the Holy Spirit told me that today you need to stay up all night praying. You need to spend time with the Lord the whole night today. And in the evening, I, was like, I had forgotten about what the Lord had told me. And in the evening, I, I went to pray and then I was like, let me go and pray. I was thinking like, let me go and pray before I go to bed. But when I started to pray, and I was thinking like, I'm just going to pray, then go to bed. But when I started to pray, then the Holy Spirit reminded me to say, tonight you need to spend the whole night in prayer. So I decided to do what the Lord had asked me to do. But because I was fasting during the day by this time in the evening i had broken my fast i had broken my fast at 6 p.m but because i had been fasting during the day like the whole day i was tired you know fasting makes you tired and then i was like um i wasn't sure if i was going to manage to stay up the whole night awake to pray because i was already starting to feel sleepy and this was 10 p.m and I started to think, can I go on like up to morning, you know, how can I stay up awake? But then I decided to give it a try. And then I started to pray. But when I started to pray, you know, I started to get more and more tired. I started to get very, very sleepy. And I thought to myself that because I've started dozing, let me just close up my prayer, then go to bed by midnight. And then I'll try another day on a better day when I'm not even sleepy. That's what I was thinking. But then when I was praying, the, the Lord God, he gave me, a, he showed me a vision. He allowed me to see this vision. And in the vision, I saw that I was in a battlefield. I was in the battlefield and the battle was so intense. And then I heard the enemy armies and they were speaking among themselves. And then they were calling out to each other and saying, the battle has been won. We have won. We have won the battle. It's over. It's over. We have won. And then they were preparing to go back home. Then the, then the vision ended. You know how, the, how the, like I just napped back from the vision and then I, I realized that I was here, I wasn't in that place that I saw myself. I was here and I was still praying. You know how a vision happens, like when you're praying, it's more like you're, one minute you're praying, then all of a sudden you just find that yourself at 
the place where God wants to show you and then you see whatever you're seeing and it's as real as though you are actually there. Then when the vision is over, it's more like you just snap back and then you realize like, oh, I'm still here. I'm still praying. Actually, that was a vision because when it's happening, you don't even know to say, oh, this is a vision, you know, but once it's over, that's when you realize to say, oh, that was a vision because everything is, it seems so real, like you're experiencing it. And when the vision ended and I realized that I was here, I was still praying and I was tired and I, I, I was like wanting to go to bed. Then I realized that the enemy was rejoicing because they had managed to convince me to abandon my vigil, to stay with the Lord for the night. Because they had convinced me that I was too tired, I was too sleepy, I needed to go and sleep and try on a better day. So that's why they were calling out to each other saying the battle has been won. Saying the battle has been won, it's over. The battle is over, we've won. And they were actually preparing to, to go back home. Then when I realized what was happening, then I decided that I was going to stay up regardless of how I felt, because I didn't want the enemy to be bragging over me that they have overcome me, that they have won the battle. And then I decided to stay. I, I, act, I was actually, I remember I was kneeling down praying, but I decided to, whilst you kneeling down, but to sit up, you know, like I was kneeling and bowed down, but I decided to kneel and to kneel upright and with my hands lifted high so that I don't doze. And then I started to pray and pray and pray. And it was very difficult. I continued to doze off often. But when I stayed down there on my knees, regardless, then after a while, the Lord God just gave me his grace out of the blue. Out of the blue, all the sleep just left. And I, I was so renewed and I received so much strength. I could actually feel it that I'm able to pray for as long as possible without even dozing. And that's how I managed to stay up for the night and I managed to pray. And then I started to think to myself that, you know, this is how Satan deceives us most times. Sometimes like he wants to make you abandon a fast. He wants to make you abandon prayer to say, oh, you go back tomorrow. Today is not suitable. You know, you know how, you, how you're feeling today. But I remember there was a time when I wanted to skip a fast, when the Holy Spirit had told me to do fasting that day. And then I wanted to skip it like, oh, I'm not feeling so good. You know, I'm not going to fast. And the Lord told me that, do you know that even when you eat, your strength does not come from the food. If I decide not to give you the strength. You can eat and still remain weak. You can sleep and still be tired, but it is the Lord who grants for you to be, to feel rested when you sleep. It's the Lord who grants for you to have the strength when you eat. And then he said, therefore you need to trust me, you know, and I trusted the Lord and he still helped me to do the fasting and it was very effective. So we, we should learn to persevere when Satan lies to you to say, look for a better day, it's a lie. The best, the better day, the best day, the most suitable day that you can do the prayer is that very day when you have already begun. Don't abandon your fast midway. Don't abandon your prayer midway and say, oh, I'll go and try tomorrow. No, don't. Do it. Even if you feel like, oh, I haven't achieved much, let me just go and eat and then try again tomorrow so that I'm going. You know how sometimes like, you know, like uh, when you finally do decide to do fasting, when you finally decide to do fasting, the enemy is going to come and try to ruin your fast by making you to be like to waste your time and to spend it on so many irrelevant things. And then at the end of the day, he's going to whisper to you and say, oh, look, your day is already wasted. Just break your fast and try tomorrow. And tomorrow is going to be the same thing. But you need to resist the enemy. You need to resist the enemy. In the first place, avoid distractions. You know, I always say like, put away your phone, put away distractions when it's time for fasting and pray. But if you fail, 
for the enemy's tricks and you are distracted and all that. And now he tells you to say, break your fast and try tomorrow. Don't. You can continue from where you are. Because once he makes you to break your fast, he's going to make you break it over and over and over. But when you realize that I've wasted my time, you can make it right from that very moment. Put away your distractions and then focus on the Lord. Jesus is going to help you for the time that is remaining. And he's going to give you the strength so that even when you do your fast tomorrow or the next day, you do it effectively. But once you give in to the enemy, the enemy rejoices over you that he has overcome you, like the vision the Lord had shown me. So we need to be strong and we need to realize that we are in a battle and we shouldn't fall for the schemes of the enemy, but we need to pray and persist in prayer. And we need to overcome because this is necessary for the crucifixion of the flesh. The flesh only dies in the presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus is what crucifies your flesh. And when you are investing your time on the things of the world, but spend so little time with Jesus, it's inevitable. Your flesh is going to be very much alive. The desires of your flesh are going to be very much alive. But once you bring it in the presence of the Lord Jesus, your flesh is going to die. Jesus is able to set you free from your addiction. Jesus is able but you need to come in his presence. Come before the Lord. Do prayer and fasting. Come and spend time in the presence of the Lord. Even when you're not fasting, spend time in the presence of the Lord. Satan is a liar. Satan is, going to, is not going to come and deceive you as a Christian without, without using scripture. He knows that Oh, if I use scripture, then it's going to sound more believable. And so he's going to misquote scripture and he's going to twist what the Lord God had said. Just like in the Garden of Eden, he knew exactly what the Lord had said to say. The Lord had not said, don't eat from any tree. But the Lord had specified that don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But what did he say? He came and said, did the Lord say, don't eat from any tree? You know, he wants to twist things. So that it may sound like, oh, this sounds like God said this. It sounds like God said it. Oh, it sounds like, yeah, Jesus, re uh, Jesus, Jesus is against spending a lot of time in prayer. And yet Jesus himself spent a lot of time in prayer. Spending a lot of time in prayer is going to crucify your flesh. I'm telling you, a person who does not spend a lot of time in prayer, they are stuck in sin. And they have no strength to overcome. The flesh can never be killed anywhere else except in the presence of Jesus. You subject it to the presence of Jesus. Then Jesus kills your flesh. And Jesus replaces that flesh with himself and with his life. And it only happens when we come before him. We need to come on our knees. Because this is about the salvation of our souls. There is a heaven, there is a hell. At the end of the day, we are going to go to one of these places. Life ends suddenly, but the time to repent and to make things right is now, today. We don't need to procrastinate repentance. Today is the day of salvation. 